everyone, it's Barbara and Mark again with another Driving with Wiki video. We are driving to New Mexico. We've been in the car for forever, <laughs> pretty long time. Uh, we thought we'd make a video to talk about WordCamp because we've had some good experiences with WordCamp and we just wanted to share our experiences and talk about what we think the future of WordCamp might be. So if you aren't familiar with what WordCamps are, uh, they're basically just WordPress conferences. Um, they're throughout the whole entire world, and sometimes they're in small cities with a small audience. And then in the case in the United States, there's one big one every year called WordCamp US. And I believe this year it's in San Diego. Yeah. Um, they haven't had it the past couple of years, but we've gone to the ones before, like what, 2019? I don't we remember the years. <laughs> one in Nashville. Yeah, Nashville we, we went, went to. to the one in Philly. In Philly, yeah. So we've been to two of the really big ones. And those get really large. They usually rent out a huge convention center. And there's, what, probably a couple thousand people. Yeah. Three talks going on at a time throughout the whole day. Uh, it's usually like two or three full days of events going on. So it's a big, it's a big conference. And what's good about the WordCamp conferences is they're very affordable. I think they're twenty dollars a day to go, and you get free lunch, and you get to meet tons of people, and you know they also have the talks. And you can learn about things. So that's what word camps are, and like I said, we've had some really good experiences with them. Um, but moving forward, that's what we want to make this video. And we aren't quite sure how they're going to do word camps moving forward. So we're just going to cover some of the you know pros and cons that we see with word camps. One of the things that I really like about Word camps, or what I liked about them in the past, is that they really are for everyone. You can be a very experienced WordPress developer, or you could be somebody that is just a hobbyist or completely new to WordPress, and there's really something that you can benefit from by going to a Word camp. Okay. Um, and what I was going to add to that is what's nice is a lot of times there be um, some big developers there that will give talks and then what they do afterwards is you can meet them in the hallway and just chat with them mm -hmm. so there's been times where we've used some pretty big plugins and the plugin developer is there so that's really cool um to know that hey the plugins that you use for your business you can talk to the guy like who made it so yeah that that's a pretty rare occurrence because you know usually you'd have to email the developer but they're open a lot of times the developers will be there to help you out like really I, I've seen people ask very technical questions like database driven stuff and your answer it like right there and show you how to do things so yeah I think that's a really good part of WordCamp is that people are there to help you they have a whole station set up at every WordCamp that we've been to where if you need help with a specific problem, you can go up to the station and say, this is the problem that I'm having and somebody will try to help you. I think that's really cool. And in our last video, we talked about the WordPress community. And I think that this is a really good example of how the WordPress community does help each other out. So if you ever go to a WordCamp, that could be something that you experience. And I think it's a really cool part of the whole yeah. day or two days, however long yeah. they are. And of WordPress. So a lot of times, uh, like we like to go, we like to do half and half. Like some people don't ever go into any of the sessions or, you know, the talks on how to do things. Some people go to just network and connect with people that they haven't seen in years. So there's a, a big part of the community who just was there to hang out and network, you know? So if you're, you know, wanted to get involved with the, some of the people in the WordPress community, that's a great place to do it. Another really big pro of WordCamps are that they are very affordable. Unlike some other conferences that I've been to that cost hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars, WordCamps are like $20 a day. They're very affordable and that's done intentionally because they want everybody to be included that wants to be included. Yeah. So they try to make it as affordable as they can. So I think that's that's really cool that they do that because not everybody can afford a conference that costs hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. Oh, so And like I said before, they also give you a decent lunch, like it's kind of buffet style. Yeah. You get snacks throughout the day, coffee, water, like and then 
a lot of times the really big ones, like the U.S. one, the big one I told you about, the very first year we went, we came back with so much swag. Like we yeah. had tons of t-shirts and stickers and thumb drives and all this stuff. And what's funny is like, we use those t-shirts like years later. That's like, that's what's yeah. funny. We have like some of these shirts that we've got. It's just the, you know, the sponsorships obviously are what makes these events happen. Yes. So you, you can just walk down the aisle with all the sponsors and they give you a lot of free stuff. So that's another benefit if that's something that you're into. So those are some of the pros about word camps. Now let's get into some of the cons. Um, I think the number one con is the fact that it is all volunteer based. So everybody working there is getting paid zero dollars and that includes the speakers too. So everybody that's you know checking you in, telling you where to go, setting everything up, they're getting paid zero dollars. And what we have noticed over the years of going is that the talks have become less and less, I don't know, what would you say? Informative or they're not advanced? As, they're not as great as they used to be. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that the speakers aren't getting paid. Yes. And this is not to say that when you go to a working camp, the people there that are volunteering their time, like they put in a lot of work and they do a really great job and, you know, hats off to them for yeah. volunteering. But when it comes to the speakers, I think that you're not going to get the greatest speakers because putting a speech together takes a lot of time. And for a lot of people, they get paid to speak. If you're yeah. a big time speaker, you're getting paid to do that because it is a lot of time. Yeah. So I think that if they started paying the speakers, we would get better speakers and better talks. So that's one thing I think that could be improved yeah. in the future. So what's weird to me is, I don't know if you watched our last video, uh, we we'll leave a card up uh, above about the WordPress pros and cons, but Automatic is the company that's basically behind WordPress. And they're the ones that, you know, do get all of these WordCamps going. They're worth tons of money. You know, they're worth billions and billions of dollars. And what's weird to me is that they don't pay the speakers. They don't pay like, anybody. I could see maybe if the people set up the tables, maybe that's volunteer based, but if your company is worth so much money, why are you not paying your speakers? Like, that's honestly disrespectful, in my opinion, where it's like, it's like I a slap it's, in the face. It's, I think they honestly should pay the people that run and set up these work camps too, because it is a ton of work. Yeah. I know from personal experience, trying to set up an event similar to like this, where you have speakers and talks, it is a lot of work. Yep. And the fact that people do this volunteer volunteering their time that's yeah i mean those people i think should get paid <laughs> which i i think might be like the disconnect now because wordpress it's gotten out how big they are and how much money they have and they're buying up companies like tumblr and all these other you know media companies so and then they're like oh hey by the way uh, you gotta talk for free like they're yeah it, i think that the future of the speakers that has to change. Like, I don't see I the quality getting much better. I think maybe what could be a solution could be to still have it where if you want to volunteer your time to talk, you can do that. But I think they could also have, like, really big names come in as well. Like, have half and half. Because it is nice for especially somebody that's trying to get more traction with their business um, get more experience speaking to be able to get up in front of people and do a talk. I think that that is a, a good benefit for a lot of people, but there's also the part where it is a lot of time and effort and people that have been doing speaking engagements for a long time are not going to be interested in speaking at a word camp if yeah. they don't get paid. And they're long talks. They're like an hour long usually. So yeah. that, that takes a lot of time to do it. Yeah, and I think talk. that if you had people that were bigger names, it would attract more people to the event. Yeah. I also think that they don't really advertise word camps very well. Um, and that's something that if they want to continue doing these in the future, 
which I'm not really sure if they, they do or not. It, it seems like there's less and less word camps. Yeah. Um, if you if you ever log into WordPress and you go to the, the dashboard, there's events in the area. and There really hasn't been a lot in our area, and we live in the Philadelphia area, so it's not like it's a small town. Um, they have smaller events occasionally, but I think a lot of them are online. Um, that's probably due to the pandemic and stuff, yeah. but you know, things are opening up now and I don't really see a lot of big WordCamp events anymore. And I wonder if it's because people are just kind of fed up with not getting paid or if they just don't know about these yeah. events because they're not advertising them. I've talked, I, so I talked to a lot of different people on LinkedIn from all around the world, basically. I, I just mention it sometimes just to see if you know if they're involved in the community. A lot of them have never even heard of it. These are people yeah. who have been in WordPress for years and years and never even heard of WordCamps, which is odd because every like platform you work on, there's a conference for it. You know, mm-hmm. if you work at Microsoft stuff or Google stuff, yeah. old school like Joomla and Drupal, like they have conferences Photoshop still. Has yeah, conferences, it's weird yeah. how a lot of people don't even know there's like a WordPress conference. So that's another thing that they have an issue with. They they have a lot of money they could spend on advertisements, but for some reason, it, they don't want to do it. Like, I know that it's a loss for them, which is probably why they don't really care about work camps as much anymore. Um, but I think it's a good thing for the community because it yeah. really, it just will grow and grow and grow the more people that know about it. But And one of the last things that really grind my gears at work camps are <laughs> When there is a huge, huge company at a sponsor level or like at the, what are the booths or whatever. So what I'm talking about are the mega big companies, the GoDaddy's, the Bluehost. They will have the biggest booth there usually with the most swag and, you know, giving away all their merch. Me personally, I have a little bit of a problem with that because in a lot of cases, these hosting companies are a lot of the problems that people have on the WordPress platform. So. What I mean by that is like Bluehost, for example, I'm not going to talk good about Bluehost because I think that they are one of the worst hosting companies out there, but yet WordPress will have their back. It doesn't make any sense because like we've been dealing with really bad hosting companies for years and years and years on WordPress. They're always the problem. Like these are companies that don't care about customer service or if your website goes down because they don't want to maintain the servers, it gets hacked. It, It goes on and on. So to me that, that's like one of the things that kind of bugged me the most. I know that they end up paying for the work camps themselves, but that seems odd to me. That's what about your opinion? I don't know. It doesn't bother me as much as it bothers Mark <laughs> because I understand that in order to run a big event like this, you need yeah. sponsorships and they can be hard to find. I definitely get that, but but to me, it's almost yeah. like my comparison would be like, let's say there's like a convention about diet, but yet McDonald's is advertising there, or like Burger King. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but that's how I see it is they should not be there at all. So that's it for today's Driving With Wiki video. And we want to know, have you ever attended a WordCamp? What was your experience with it? Did you enjoy it? Did you say you're going to come back to one ever again? We'd love to know what your thoughts are about WordCamps and WordCamp future. If you like videos like this, give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and we'll see you on the road. Bye bye.